Um, thank you for having me, having us. Sorry to be late. Um, this New York traffic, I only <laughs> read about it, but never been in it. <laughs> um, I'd like to say hello to Anita. Juanita. Juanita. Remember me in Los Angeles when you came down from New York for the Oscar Grant? Yeah, I thought that was you. I wanted to say hi. And then um, I forgot her name, but does anyone here have a mother named Tova? Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, i like to thank your mother for, um, and, make, and she said make sure we speak to you. You look just like her. <laughs> but you got a beautiful mother, and your mother's really doing the work in California. And she's make, she is giving the Bluferts. She's one of the biggest supporters for the Alan Bluford Coalition. Yeah, yeah. And um, so Oscar Grant was a young man. Um, he was 22 years old. And um, he was from Hayward, California, along with my sons and about seven other people that were with him. December 31st um, of 2009 and um, so it's hard to talk about it because you know he's gone and then you know like I try to block it out in my head because when you think about it and you relive that video it just opens up the wounds and and then like uh, I just got to be honest like it's like it's hard to talk about it because I kind of like live with guilt because my two sons, especially my son Jackie, who was attacked by Johannes Mesley, um, they're here and Oscar's not. And then when I hear about other, like the Bluefords and Juanita, Sean Bell, and it's like, it's hard to talk about it because, you know, it's like guilt, you, you know. But Oscar Grant was 22 years old. He was from Hayward, California. And so New Year's Eve, they went to, uh, Oscar was with his mother, Wanda. It was, her th it was her birthday, December 31st. So Oscar, Tatiana, his daughter, and Sophina were with Wanda, his mother. And my sons and the other young men were at a party in Hayward. So um, this young, someone said, let's go to San Francisco. So they called Oscar Grant. And they said, all right, let's go to San Francisco. So they got on the BART train around 11.15. And then um, they got to San Francisco late. They missed the fireworks. So they walked around for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And then Oscar Grant said, he told my sons and the other young man, he said, let's go. Let, um, let's get out of here. So it was about 1.40. So my son, when he was telling me, he said when they walked down to the BART station, they were joking around, you know, having fun. They were all laughing. You know, it was the New Year's. And, you know, they were, you know, they had a few drinks. They were celebrating like any other person in the United States that celebrates January 1st. So the hard part to imagine this is um, one minute you're celebrating a new year and you're saying all the changes you're gonna make, I'm gonna be a better father, I'm gonna get I'm gonna be a better person, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. They're all talking about, you know, like what they're gonna do for the new year. Like all of us do. I don't know why we wait till January first to say I'm gonna change our life, but we do. <laughs> so so imagine you're just talking and joking around and then you're on a train. And then all of a sudden this the a, 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 a fight breaks out. Oscar Grant has a little fight, but before it even got started, it was broken up. My sons and the other young men broke up the fight. But there was this white guy on the train, and what he did, he pushed the button and he told the conductor, he said, there's eight black young men jumping on one white guy. So the conductor was like, are there any weapons? And he said, I don't know, but they're beating the guy pretty bad. But it was just a little tussle. So then um, my sons, they're mixed. They're black and Hispanic. Um, Oscar Grant was black. John Tooth mixed. Uh, Michael, they, they, they come from a different variety of races. So they weren't all black males like this white man described. So what she did, and she was African American and she testified in court. What she did, she called the bar police and she said there's a fight on a train. She doesn't have no information about it. But all she knows is that there's a fight. Someone reported a fight. 
so then they get um so the train stops they get off and then um the young men along with Oscar's fiance uh, girlfriend they're standing there and so my son looks at the uh, my son Nigel looks at the um the lady and uh, she testified in court she feels so bad for even reporting this but my son looked at her and he said did you call the police she said yes I did she said baby she was african-american she goes baby just go home please just go home before they get here so then he asked her again he said you call the police she said baby yeah just go home I'm telling you just go home so Nigel he turned around to Oscar and all them and um, he said, come on, she called the police and let's go. So they started going down the escalator. So they, were going, they, they decided to go back to my house. But before they could do it, um, these police officers were running up the escalade, just running. So my son Nigel, he was walking ahead. So this police officer pulls his taser out and he puts it in my son's face and he has the dot on my son's face and he says, get your fucking ass against the wall. My son said, for what? I didn't do nothing. He said, shut the fuck up and get against the wall. So my son throws his hands up and he goes sit down and then his brother Jackie says, what, what are you doing? What are you doing to my little brother? He says, shut the fuck up and you get your ass against the wall too. So they go sit down. So Oscar Grant sees what's going on. So Oscar Grant jumps back on the train so the police officer, he's walking with his gun off, and he's pointing it, and we just found out any time a police officer takes his uh, taser or his gun out, that's a violation of people's civil rights, especially when he's pointing it at a whole train. So he sees um, Oscar went back in the train, so then um, he's saying, I know you're on my fucking train, get off my fucking train. And his, his name is Tony Peroni. And so there's again a white guy says, man, get off the train, man, you're holding us up, we want to go home, he's right here. So Oscar's like, damn, so he gets Oscar, Oscar walks, so he grabs Oscar, and he slams Oscar against the wall and throws him down, and then my son Jackie jumps up in protest, he says, what are you doing to my cousin, man, what are you doing to us? And he tells my son, shut the fuck up, and Oscar's like, Jackie, just be cool. Just be cool. He's tell Oscar's the peacemaker. And Oscar says, look, we're going to do everything you tell us. So then another young man, Michael Greer, he's on the train. So he goes back. He's like, get off my fucking train. Don't have me come on my train. So same white guy goes, man, get off the train, man. You know, what do you, you know, just in a hurry to get home. So Michael Greer gets off the train and he grabs Michael Greer by his dreadlocks. He had long dreadlocks. And he grabs him. And when he's walking him, he flips Michael Greer by his dreads and he completely throws him in a circle and he lands on his back. And then uh, my son and Oscar jump up and Oscar's like, man, what are you doing? We're just, man, we're doing everything you're telling us. What is this all about? And then um, uh, my youngest son, he was like, man, call Oakland PD because you guys are fake cops, you know? And my son was saying, call OPD. We want the police called on you because they were being assaulted. So then, they lined up and words are being exchanged and then everything is quiet and then um, they're trying to run their name so they start singing this song because one of the police officers her name was Dominici she was standing over them and she was talking crazy to them so my son starts singing this song by Little Wayne um, Miss Officer <laughs> this officer and he's taking the braids out of his hair and then they all start singing that song by Little Wayne, Mrs. Officer. So she's getting mad and she's telling them to shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. So they're singing the song. So then um, it's two o'clock. No, this happened at two o'clock. So now it's 209. So Johannes Mesley arrives on the platform and Johannes Mesley is um, six, six, five to six, seven, 260 pounds. Oscar Grant is five, eight, 170 pounds. So um, he comes running up, he comes running up the stairs and um, they're sitting there and um, they're trying to, you know, they're saying, man, can you please call a supervisor? Because this ain't cool what's going on. So they're telling them to shut the fuck up. So they're going back and forth. So then Johannes Mesley, um, everyone said, oh, maybe he didn't mean to take his gun out. Because he, um, he, he went for his taser. But what he did, um, Johannes Mesley started, um, he got my son up. He started punching my son. And my son fell down. So Oscar Grant took his camera out and he was filming it. So um, my son Jackie, he's sitting down, so he takes his taser out and he tells my son Jackie, shut the fuck up or I'm going to tase you. 
And then my son Jackie throws his hand back and says, all right, we're good, we're good. So he puts his taser in, but Oscar Grant was filming it, so he turned around. He seen Oscar Grant filming him, so he took his taser out again. And he put it at his midsection, and he said, what the fuck did I tell you? So Oscar Grant said, all right, all right. He put the taser back. So then um, Johannes Medley, he went back to my son. He handcuffed my son. And this is uh, 209, and Oscar Grant was dead by 211 when he arrived. And so what happened is that um, he handcuffed my son. He jumps on Oscar Grant's back, and he starts handcuffing Oscar Grant. And Oscar Grant is like, all right, you got me. I surrender. I can't breathe. He had asthma. And he was saying, I can't breathe, because one officer, Tony Peroni, had his um, knee on Oscar Grant's um, neck, and the other police officer had so he got Oscar Grant's hand, there was a struggle, and when my son testified, he said Johannes Mesley stood up and said, fuck this shit, pulled his gun out and shot him in the back, and the bullet went through his lung, hit the concrete, and went through his other lung. And my son, he jumped up, and then the other police officer said, what the fuck did you do? He said, he said what the fuck did you shoot him for? That was Tony Peroni. And he just, uh, he looked dumbfolded and he said, I thought he was reaching for a gun. But his handcuffs were cuffed. So then, um, my son, he jumped up, he didn't know what was going on. And he, he said, I know he didn't shoot him. And he was startled. And then Oscar Grant looked at my son and he said, he shot me. And my son Jackie was like, oh, don't close your eyes. He said, he shot me. So he said, my son was saying everything was happening so, so slow, like he couldn't believe this. You know, you're going from having fun and 15 minutes later your friend is being killed by the police of all people. So he said when they picked Oscar Grant up, all this smoke and blood started coming out of his chest and out of his mouth. And my son was like, oh. Don't close your eyes, please. Oh, look at me. And he's looking at him. And then they took Oscar Grant and they drug him into the corner and just dropped him. And then um, they, they took these young men um, to jail, my sons and them. And they, my son was saying, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. And they told my son, Jackie, shut the fuck up. We ain't calling nobody. So it took him about 20, 20 minutes to call an ambulance. So then... Um, they took these young men to jail. They kept them there for four hours. They kept them in the back seat of the police car for two hours. Then when they took them out, they punched one of them in the, young, in the face, Carlos and June. And this is the behavior of the police officers, because um, I've heard it from other families. Like, my son Nigel was having a panic attack, because he didn't know what, you know, he just, you know, this, you hear about it, but now this is reality. And they laid my son Nigel on the, um, in the lunchroom, and he was handcuffed for two hours, and they laid him on his stomach, and he was saying, Dad, what, they were like joking about it. They were giving each other high fives. They were like laughing about what they just did. And um, my son Jackie was in a cell, and Tony Peroni, he took off his shirt, because he's a big guy, and he kicked his, took his shirt off, and he had like a tight shirt on, and he was flexing, and he put his feet on the table, and he put his hands behind his back, and he was rocking back and forth in the chair. My son said, what did you do to my friend? And he, they were laughing about it, but he wouldn't give them the answer. So then um, there was another young man, June. He, he got dehydrated from seeing his, his friend being murdered, and he said, could I please have some water? And the police said, are you going to talk? He said, no, I'm not going to talk. Could I please have some water? So the police officer got a bottle of water, and he took the water, and he drunk the whole bottle in front of him and dropped the bottle like that. And um, this, this is the behavior. And the reason I started getting into um, activism is because um, there's a law um, when a police officer kills a young man and his friends could be charged with that murder, even though, what's it called? Um, I, forgot, I forgot the name of it, but in California, if there's a crime and um, an officer kills a young man and his friends are with him, not the officer, but his friends will be charged with that murder. So 
when the mothers, they were calling and they were, my kid's mother, she was screaming in the phone. She didn't know, we didn't know who got shot and all that. So th they were calling down there and the police were just hanging up on them. And, you know, they didn't, you know, they were just hanging up on them. And then I remember my son, they let him out four hours later. And then his last, he called me, I was calling him. I was like, what's going on? He said, dad, I don't know. Let me call you back. So when he got to the hospital, I could hear everybody screaming in the background. And then he called me, he was crying. He said, dad, he's gone. I said, what do you mean? He said, he, he, he was crying. He said, he's gone. They killed Oscar. So then, um, that was that. But um, that's what made me get into activism because th that was my sons. You know, they were all, they all called each other cousins and best friends and all that. So I've, I've always been in my son's life. Um, so it was my responsibility to my sons, to Oscar Grant's family, and to the community to um, get involved and make it happen. I didn't want to do it, but I had a, no choice to do it because I had to protect my sons and the other young men and also the community. So we rallied, we, we made things happen. Um, we didn't get what we wanted, but it was the first time in California history, basically in history, that a police officer was ever charged for murder. But they didn't um, give him murder, just like I'm looking at Mumia. The same thing that happened, everything Mumia talks about in his um, book, Jailhouse Lawyer, it's the same thing that happened in Oscar Grant's trial. Um, we were just looking at the, the Mumia documentary. Mumia, he was tried by an all-white jury. Um, and when we were in Los Angeles, I sat there for the whole time. And um, this is what this system does. Like, they changed the venue from Oakland, California to Los Angeles. There was three judges, Judge Jacobs, who told Johannes Mesley, I don't believe it was an accident. I believe you intended to kill Oscar Grant. Then he switched it to another court. And Judge Clay, he said, I believe you um, intended to kill Oscar Grant. I don't believe the story that you were reaching for a taser, so I'm sending you to trial for murder. And then Judge Reardon was the last judge because he had to go through all three judges in Alameda, California, Oakland, California, said they believe that this man intended to kill Oscar Grant, so he was going to trial for murder. So what they did, they worked it, they changed the venue, they got it into a courtroom where um, his, the judge's name was Robert Perry, and Robert Perry is the judge that freed all the Rampart, remember the Rampart Police Department? This was the judge that freed um, all the Rampart police officers. So as I was looking at Mumia, the same thing, like watching the juries, um, here's the questions they were asking. If, you're, if they were asking the black jurors, have you ever been arrested or you have been pulled over by a police officer. And the black jurors were saying, all the time, I'm always racial profile. Then they were saying, well, then you hold prejudice against police officer. And they were like, what do you mean I hold prejudice? I was just being pulled over. They were saying, no, you have a resistance against police officers. So they would exclude all the black jurors for that. But then when they would ask the white jurors, they would ask, how do you feel about police officers? And the white folks would say, oh, my, my daughter-in-law, um, my daughter-in-law, I mean, my daughter is married to a police officer. Or my next door neighbor, he's a police officer. Everyone that was connected to the police, that's who was selected for the jury. And then that's how they worked it out for this police officer to receive only um, 11 months. So um, that's how I got involved and through organizing and um, becoming an activist. Because normally I was blind to it because I was always like, long as it didn't affect me, then um, and it didn't bother me, then I was cool with it till it happened. And that's what happens when it happens to us, then we want to get involved. So, but ever since then, I've been um, very active in trying to make things happen against the police. And that's how I met this lovely family, the Bluefords. Um, if you really look at their case, it's like Oscar Grant without the video. And it's also like the reverse of Mumia, <laughs> you know. Um, what I mean by reverse, this police officer who killed their son, 
haven't been charged, but Mumia, who didn't kill the police officer, has been charged with murder. So everything is the reverse, and what I mean by that, it, and it also benefits the system for themselves. So I'll let them explain that. And um, I just want to thank you and appreciate this. Thank you. Wow.